this is Hedda. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another reading journal update. We have a few um, changes to my reading journal. I got this cover from Leela Journals. It is so pretty, but it definitely makes my reading journal a lot chunkier. It doesn't really matter though, because I don't bring my reading journal out and about. So now it just looks really pretty on my shelf. My August spreads are in my previous reading journal video if you're interested in seeing me talk about those books and making those spreads. For now we're gonna start with September and the books that I read in September. I got a lot of new stationery in September actually. I've got some new washi tapes and stickers and ephemera from Paper Monogatari. So thank you so much to Anna for sending those over. She is so kind and sending me pretty much every new collection that she has and I am so grateful because these stickers are so pretty. You've definitely seen me use a lot of her stickers and other stationery already, so uh, yeah, I'm a long time fan of hers. <laughs> I also got some new stationery from Notebook Therapy, the Hinoki Into the Library stamps and pet tapes. These are so pretty. And also from Lila Journals, I got this wooden stamp with this lace frame, kind of looks like a doily and it's really pretty. I wanted to use it in my September spreads. So let's just get started with my September cover page. As you can see, I used the stamp from Lila Journals to make these little frames, and I stamped with a kind of brown ink on this kind of yellowish cream-ish paper that is from the Notebook Therapy Junk Journal. That notebook has a lot of different papers and I have basically just ripped out the pages from that notebook and used it in my collages because there are so many different colors and textures that work really well with my reading journal spreads and my bullet journal spreads as well. Let's not discriminate against the bullet journal. <laughs> I read four books in September. Well, actually, I read one manga series and three novels. The manga is only four volumes for the whole series, so I decided to just put all of those in one. For the decoration, I am using the pumpkin spice sticker from Paper Monogatari, but I also have these pet tape mushroom stickers, I guess. Well, they are from a pet tape, I'm pretty sure, but I've cut them out to become stickers. One of you guys actually sent these to me in a pen pal letter and I haven't used them yet, so I thought this would be the perfect opportunity. I wanted to create a very fall-y September cover page, so I played around with a few of the frames or the mushroom stickers, I don't know. I am so unsure about this type of pet tape because sometimes I feel like they look like they've been made by AI <laughs> and of course I can't be sure because I don't know where this one is from but sometimes some pet tapes just have that look don't they <laughs> hopefully I'm just wrong you know I'm not that good at discerning what is AI art and what isn't but sometimes I feel like they just have that look and it could just be that AI art is copying a certain look and that makes me think of AI art when I see that type of art. I'm not sure. It's difficult and it's a difficult topic so maybe too big for me to just talk about randomly in a video like this. <laughs> um, I made a collage on the left side that would be kind of the cover page for September decorated it with a few different types of stickers. I used the September title from a Paper Monogatari sticker sheet, but this one I think is from last year because she makes these quarterly collections and they always have the three months titles of like that quarter. I love that and they're always big enough to be used in my reading journal as a header or like title, so love that. I tried to make the right side of the spread very similar to the left side but of course it would need to have the frames where I could write down the books. So I used the same washi paper which is also from Paper Monogatari. I used one of the mushroom pet tape sticker thingies but I made sure to use one without a frame behind it so that it would not take up as much space. It would be less substantial. I don't know if that 
make sense even. I also used my frog sticker. This is the last one that I had left. It is a frog vinyl sticker. I used to give them out as freebies to my customers, like in with my shop orders last year, I think. And then I've just been keeping them around. Well, I haven't made any more. I've just been selling them slowly at markets and they've done quite well at markets but now i'm all out and i don't think i'll be making any more so i wanted to give it a little bit of attention on my september cover page in my reading journal and with some final sparkles for a little extra details we are done with the cover page i will be filling out the books after making the other spread so that I don't spoil anything for you guys. I bet you are waiting in suspense to hear which books I read in September. <laughs> But let's start with the manga. I haven't read that much manga this year. And this one is actually a sequel to one of my favorite mangas of all time, Fruits Basket. A few years ago, well, I guess it's almost 10 years ago now, um, the author, the artist, decided to make a sequel that is about the children of the characters in the original Fruits Basket. I think that it was made as a kind of promotion for the remake of the anime, which, I mean, let's all be real, the remake is so much better than the original anime. <laughs> I actually started reading Fruits Basket another a few years ago, and then I just never finished it, which is really weird since there are only four volumes. Well, actually, there's like three volumes and a chapter and then there are these like bonus chapters about three of the original characters and i thought you know it's time to just like read all of fruits basket another in one go and kind of finally read all of it because fruits basket the original manga was such a big part of my teenage years i feel like it taught me so much about love and emotions i guess as a teenager who just wasn't able to talk about their feelings i mean still having a hard time with that uh slowly learning <laughs> and i always just really enjoyed the humor in the manga as well i loved seeing the evolution of takaya natsuki's art style because that definitely changed over the course of the fruits basket manga it is pretty long so i don't know how many years she spent making that but it would have been a long time i decided to make this spread with some dutch doors because i printed out these pictures from the manga basically the character on each of the four volumes and then one kind of group photo which i think is kind of the cover photo for the 13th chapter which is the the one extra chapter in the fourth uh, volume and i wanted all of the characters to have a designated space and it would have been hard to fit that onto just one regular spread so instead i made two dutch doors this also gave me a little bit more room to write my thoughts on the manga because I just think it's nice to have a little bit more room to write. I think also because Fruits Basket had such a big impact on me growing up, I had a lot of thoughts. So I could have made even more spreads, I think. <laughs> I had this idea that I wanted to use a pet flower tape uh, and cut out the flowers and kind of have them be along the top and the bottom border. This is something that I've done a lot in my reading journal and it just works really well all the time. It is such a simple way to add a lot of decoration to a page without it being too intense. And so I just got out my cutting mat and my X-Acto knife and I just cut around a bunch of these flowers. This particular pet tape, I'm pretty sure I got either from Journal Say or from AliExpress. It's hard to say. The flowers are pretty large, so they were great for this spread. And I only cut out the flower parts, not the other things that is on this tape. I um, actually regretted my technique here a little bit because this pet tape just stuck really well to the paper. Some pet tapes 
are easy to peel off after like if you place it down and then you cut off edges like i'm doing here they will come off easily again they won't stick super hard to the page but this bit they did and i definitely ripped off some of the paper uh, clearly i did not learn because i kept doing the same thing instead of just kind of cutting a straight line off the sticker before placing it down so I guess it wasn't that important, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I think a little mess is fine. It is it is part of part of the hobby, you know. <laughs> I had already made these frames with a thick fine liner because I I think it kind of it matches the manga format to have this this frame. And then I placed the flowers down and then I glued down the characters. So I have Sawa and Shiki on the front page. I could have probably had one more, but I couldn't find a picture that would fit. So the kind of last Dutch door page only has flowers and no character. But that was also fine because the characters, well, I printed them pretty large. So <laughs> there wasn't that much room to write left on the Dutch doors after I'd added the flowers and the characters. So, um, you know, yeah, it, it is what it is. <laughs> my mantra when it comes to my reading journal is uh, no regrets. <laughs> It will just be what it is and mistakes are fine. It doesn't matter. So after I had done all of the decoration, I wanted to glue in the little book covers that I've started to do in my reading journal this year. But of course I printed these smaller than I would on a regular like novel page. And I decided to glue them kind of to the very right of the spread so that it would be visible no matter where in the spread I am. And then I added a fun little bubble font title with another kind of scribbled at the end. And uh, that was it for the spread. So then I just filled it in. I used my Muji black gel pen in 0.5. It is my favorite pen to write with and I actually have had months where I've tried not using it in my reading journal because I want to save it, you know? There's no Muji in Norway, so it's not like I can just refill it whenever I want. I guess I haven't really talked much about the actual manga in this video so far, but it's difficult to talk about it because it is a sequel. So if I talk much about it, it will kind of spoil the entire first or original manga, kind of? I don't know. My main complaint about this is that all the characters look like spitting images of their parents and some of them have very similar personalities and I wished that there would have been a little bit more variety. But overall, it was really cute and I enjoyed it very much. The second book I read, or I guess the first novel I read in September, was the third and final book in the Mistborn series by Brandon Sanderson. This one is The Hero of Ages and I was so excited about this because I really enjoyed the first and the second novel. I was excited to see if there would be more female characters. <laughs> um, I, and I, you know, I, I, I still have the previous complaints. <laughs> Honestly, like this book series has like, what, five female characters in a sea of men plus one female character that is kind of added towards the end, but she's just like the girlfriend of someone and she has like one line. And two of the characters die and then there's Vin, you know? Uh, and so yeah, I can't, can't really spoil what happens to her, you know, gotta be careful. Uh, this book had a lot of plot twists. I really enjoyed the layers of this series a lot. I enjoyed how the story kept changing and it's about history and um, how history is changed and manipulated and it was so very enjoyable. I really liked the shift of the narration from one character to another. I think that although like the story itself is not necessarily new and unique but the way that it was told I think was pretty unique and pretty great. So that's one thing that I really enjoyed about this book series. To decorate the spread, I used some of the stained glass pet tape from Notebook Therapy. I also used this purple cloud washi tape that one of you guys sent to me in a pen pal letter. 
and a stained glass sticker that I also got in a pen pal letter. I got a few different ones and I chose this one because it had a little bit of blue and a little bit of yellow and I wanted to kind of pick up the colors that are on the book cover and the book cover is mainly yellow and purple and beige kind of. So I thought that these pieces look quite good together. Purple is not a color that I dabble in too much. I think, you know, I have overcome my f fear, <laughs> my dislike for blue and now it is purple that I need to overcome, I think, because although I like the color purple, I find it difficult to match it with any other color except for maybe yellow like yellow and purple is a, a fun color combination uh, purple and green as well but that's kind of about it I used a witch sticker from Marigona Suli on this page because I wanted a person in front of the stained glass and you know I thought a witch would be as good as, good as anything else really there are no witches in the Mistborn series but still I do not try to make my spreads match the book too much, but I do try to match the colors roughly to the cover of the books. So I just like, you know, a slight match, but not too much because I still want to keep my creative freedom. The stained glass pet tape is just really pretty and I'm so happy that Notebook Therapy sent it over. I have a discount code with Notebook Therapy actually, so if you put in my code MOCHIBUJO10 at checkout you get 10% off your order and I also earn a small commission, so it's really a win-win situation. I have more discount codes in the description box below because I do have affiliate agreements with quite a few stationary brands at this point. So definitely check that out if you're looking for any new stationery. The quote that I chose for this page is, I am unfortunately the hero of ages. And you can just guess who says that. <laughs> I did a very elaborate purple title on the right side of the spread, which I think really adds to the spread. And uh, that's it for this book. Let's move on to the next one. This one is maybe an anomaly, a little bit different from the books that I normally read. This is some contemporary fiction. It is Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt. It is American fiction set in the northwest of the US. I chose to read this one because it's just popped up everywhere for me on Goodreads, on like Kindle, on my Audible, just everywhere. So I thought I would give it a go. And it's actually a really sweet, heartwarming and wholesome story and I really enjoyed reading it. It was very easy to read. It's not too long. It's relatively slow paced but not too slow, you know? It's one of those books that doesn't really have a villain. It's about love and missing people you love. It's about grief and I just thought it was a really sweet story. I can understand why it has been so popular. I mean, I think it's popular because I've seen it everywhere. I'm not sure. Maybe it's just like my algorithm. I don't know. <laughs> oh, by the way, if you see any changes in lighting or my sweater, <laughs> It's because I filmed this video over the course of, I think, three days. I was so busy and I could only squeeze in a little bit of filming each day, so that's why the lighting changes a little bit and my clothes change because I don't like wearing the same thing three days in a row. <laughs> there is an, a, an epidemic in book covers where so many book covers uses blue. I feel like 50% of book covers are blue. That's too much blue. With this book, it makes sense because one of the protagonists is a, an octopus, an octopi, octopuses, octopi. Um, they live in the ocean. So naturally, the cover depicts an octopus in the ocean. So blue, or well, in a tank, I suppose. So the blue makes sense. And I don't mind the blue in this 
this particular case but I feel like a lot of the time so many book covers use this blue and I don't know why. Can someone tell me why so many book covers are blue? Well, for this spread, I really embraced the colors on the book cover a lot. The orange and the blue. There's even a little bit of yellow in the cover, which repeats in these stickers that I used. Well, actually, it's a washi tape that I glued onto some paper, and then I cut out the paper, and then I glued the paper onto the journal because I just wanted the, the image to show up a little bit more vividly. This pet tape one of you guys sent to me actually, and it seems to be uh, themed after maybe the little prince or something like that because there's a lot of like planets and little boys. <laughs> so that's just kind of the vibe I'm getting. Could also just be astronomy themed, I suppose. I'm not sure. It's pretty cute. I used my alphabet silicone stamps to stamp the title Remarkably Bright Creatures because I have this ink pad in the color pumpkin spice <laughs> and it's actually the perfect orange for the spread. It's literally the exact same color as the thin orange washi tape and the orange on the cover of the book so I'm very happy with that. I think that it turned out really nice. One last thought on this book though. Although it was really sweet and really wholesome and it made me feel really good reading it, it was kind of predictable so the plot twist or like the grand reveal it didn't shock me at all because I already kind of figured it out um, but you know it was still a very sweet and calm read, a very cozy read, so for that I gave it five stars because I did really enjoy it. For the final book of the month we're going back to fantasy. This is The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. I had had this on my TBR for the longest time and it's been sitting on my Kindle waiting for me to read it for several months and I'm really glad I finally read it because it was a very enjoyable read. So I have never read anything by Axie O before she is a Korean American as far as I know and this book it's a fantasy novel but it has ties to Korean culture I don't know how much of the kind of folklore like fantasy aspect has roots in actual Korean folklore so I'm just going to assume that it's kind of set in a type of Korea but not really based on real Korea you know what I really liked about this book right away is that it throws you straight into the action there's no like setting up the story or world building at the beginning it just starts right you, you just get thrown into it and this is one of the things that I really enjoy about Martha Wells murder bot series because it is the same way you're just kind of thrown into it and things are happening and then you just kind of figure it out as you go and that's what this book does as well it just starts right in the middle of the action and then you get a little bit of like flashbacks or like backstory as you move along but at least the story has already started and it's just action-packed from the very first page and I really really enjoy that. I thought the premise was very exciting and new. Hi Margot! Margot is taking a little break from her kittens and she came to say hello. She probably wants food. <laughs> That's usually why she comes to me. <laughs> anyway, this book. I really liked it. I thought it had interesting characters. It had an interesting premise. It had um, very cool fantasy elements. If there's one thing I missed, it would have been maybe a little bit more of a, or a better description of the world that we're in, the sea god's realm or the sea god city, because once in a while we get reminded that it is underwater because there are like fish swimming past, but other than that it just seems like a regular city, like nobody is swimming or anything, <laughs> they're just walking around like normal and there is really no more like sea decor i don't really know how to explain it but i wish that there had been more descriptions of the sea god city that made it clear 
that it was underwater because I think that it's a very cool and different setting. But it just kind of slipped my mind at times because of the other descriptions like with the rivers and the lakes and everything. It just didn't seem like it was underwater anymore. Overall, really enjoyed it. Loved the twists and the characters and the, yeah, everything. It was great. For the decoration, I used some of the paper monogatari stuff, but I also used some stickers and washi tapes that you guys have sent to me. And I think the end result turned out really cute. So now you guys know the drill, the final flip through of the spreads that I made in this video. Hi, Margot. We have a visitor again. She's very restless today. <laughs> She's just meowing at me, wanting to play all the time. So after this, I'm going to play with her a lot. Um, yeah, where were we? <laughs> the flip through. I'm really happy with all the books and manga that I read in September. So yeah, I'm also very excited for October because it is finally spooky month and horror books. And, you know, I've already started, I've read some great horror so far, very excited for the rest of the month. So bring on those horror book recommendations. I've loved getting lots of recommendations from you guys in the past couple of reading journal videos, and it is finally time to read them all. If you've read any of the books that I talked about in this video, let me know in the comments what you thought of them, if you agree with my sentiments or if you disagree, because I love discussing those kinds of things. And if you have a favorite spread from this month, let me know. I actually think October is going to be quite the amazing reading month because I've already read three books. <laughs> I know we're just still in the first week of October, but it kind of started towards the end of September because I was so eager to start reading the horror books. So I cheated and started a little bit early. But uh, yeah, I guess this means that my next reading journal video will be extra long if I'm going to fit all my October reads into one video, we'll see. And also, who knows, my reading might slow down after this and maybe I'll only read a couple more books. Who knows? I actually have a lot of pages left in my journal, so that worries me a little bit. Even if I read like 10 books every month for the rest of the year, I still won't fill it. So uh, yeah, there's that. Anyway, that's just how it is. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. If you watched it all the way to the end, be sure to put a flower emoji in your comment. Any flower will do. Thank you so much to everyone who is subscribed to my channel. And of course, a big thank you to all of my patrons because you guys are the best. All the products I used in this video are linked in the description box below if I have links for it or know where it's from. I hope that you're all having a lovely day and I'll see you next time. Bye.